Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. This is stage four of the Tour de France 2022. Now, when Sunday stage three finished, all the riders jumped on the jet because they had a long transfer from Denmark over to France. Some of the riders, Israel Premier Tech, got to go a little bit higher than first class when they're leaving Denmark as they had a private chartered flight to take them over to France, while the rest of the peloton just had a normal chartered flight to fly over to France. There is some benefits to having a bigger budget in the European peloton, and this is just one of them where Israel Premier Tech get to go in style over the France. Now, when we saw stage three finish, we know Wout Van Aert finished second on that stage. He finished second on stage two, and he finished second in the individual time trial. When we all expected the Jumbo Visma rider to win here on stage one of the Tour de France, and instead it was Eve Lamparts from Quick Step that won stage one. Fabio Jakobsen, his teammate that won stage two, and Dylan Grunewagen that won stage three on Sunday for bike exchange. Big, big victory for Dylan Grunewagen to wrap up that win on stage three for bike exchange. When today's stage starts, you know Jumbo Visma's Wout Van Aert wants to win a stage. I know he's wearing yellow, right? He's wearing green too, but Jumbo Visma's Wout Van Aert is Definitely eager to get a stage win as we've seen him trying on the individual time trial one and two stage. Today's stage starts off and it's basically a sleeper. It's a two-man break that goes up the road. Magnus Court Nelson and Anthony Perez. Now Magnus Court Nelson's been in the KOM jersey since stage two here at the Tour de France, and he's taken every KOM classification point sprint here throughout stage two, three, and now he's in the breakaway again with six mountain climbs on today's stage that are categorized. And right up front, we're gonna see it's Magnus Court Nelson on the first KOM that's just gonna deliver a devastating sprint to Anthony Perez and win the first KOM here on stage three. Now, stage four, I'm sorry. Now, as the two riders continue to start growing up the road and growing that gap to about six, six and a half minutes on the peloton behind, it's all a sleeper. There's nothing really happening. And then all of a sudden, the first KOM comes up for the peloton and it's quick step up front that decides to throw down the gauntlet and split the field. It's chaos back there for about seven to 10 kilometers until quick step realized that Basically, from the beginning of this stage, they've had two riders riding at the back, and one's Micah Morkoff, and the other one's Mikhail Honore. Once they realize they got a couple teammates lost off the back right there, they decide to shut it down. Bahrain Victorious threw in a little bit of effort at the front at that moment to keep things split. As we see, the peloton was split in half, and then there was the group behind chasing with the two quick step riders that are trying to get themselves back up to the front. After that chaos, section right there that was about it is got down to about another sleeper part of the stage and then it was 75 kilometers to go when it was trek segafredo that jumped on the front and they're drilling it hard at the front only problem is is trek segafredo's mads Pedersen has a bike issue and he's out the back when he's coming back he's on the back of the team car there trek segafredo he swings off to the left as the team car goes off the road on the right slamming the brakes on when it does, I'm taking a bit, ed, bit of an educated guess here at 50 years old. I'm assuming the front tires got traction on the road and it pulls the car hard to the left. When it does, it's Mads Pedersen that just misses the front end of the Trek Segafredo car there as he's slamming the brakes on to try to avoid the car in front. Now Mads Pedersen will get back on. Trek Segafredo will ease off the gas and the gap up to the front group of two there will start to expand again. It'll take until about 40 kilometers to go when the peloton back there start getting a little more nervous and start racing side to side on the curb here and really get the whole field anxious, nervous, and the speed start coming up under 30 kilometers to go when we start to see Jumbo Visma's Nathan Van Hoydunk and Jack Durbridge, I believe it is. These two riders start going at it. Looked like Van Hoydunk came a little bit too close to Jack Durbridge from Bike Exchange. Jack wasn't happy with it. You see him start pointing the finger over there at Nathan Van Hoydunk, and Nathan Van Hoydunk just accelerates again, gives a look back over the shoulder there to Jack, and then goes through the next turn. Then we come out of the next turn, and once again, it's Nathan Van Hoydunk that does a little bit of a push there on Jack and then the two start going at it again with Jack pointing out that his fingers at Nathan you did it to me twice not just once but twice here so yes I'm a little bit angry those two work it out and then up front as the pace of the peloton starts getting really nervous we look all the way on the left side of the road Yambo Visma's got their team on the left and we're coming under 25 kilometers to go 
All the way on the right is Team Ineos. In between is Sprinter Teams, GC Teams, and the fight here at the Tour de France is going hot. Up front, Anthony Perez, who's now solo and left Magnus Court Nelson as he's attacking up the road. He's going on his own, still only has about a 30 second to a minute gap at any point in time once he went solo on today's stage. Behind the peloton is just going faster, hitting about 80, 80 plus kilometers an hour as we're nearing the coast. And then as we're coming into the most crucial section, the last KOM of today's stage, it starts with 11.8 kilometers to go, and it's going to summit with just under 11 kilometers to go because, folks, it's only 900 meters long, but it's 7.5% rated, and I got to believe when I watched it live, it's probably a little bit steeper than that. One more obstacle for Enos back there as they're taking the front, diving into this final last climb, KOM climb here at the Tour de France stage four. There's a chicane. We can see it just behind Anthony Perez, who's still leading at this point in time. He'll dive through the last corner. We look just in the background there. It's Enos. Dylan Van Bartley, that's the first rider to come out of the last corner. Only problem is he's got some company, and it's in the form of Jumbo Visma, and it's almost their whole team here behind. They got some mixed in Enos riders here as both teams are trying to fight for dominance on this last final KOM when it started. But guess what? Right after it starts, Nathan Van Hoydunk will just go straight past Dylan Van Barley and start drilling it. Dylan Van Barley slot in between. After Dylan Van Barley's wheel, though, is when it starts getting interesting because it's T. Spanute back there. Then it's Walt Van Art. Then it's followed by Christophe Laporte. Just behind Christophe Laporte is the bike exchange rider. He's going to blow up and open up a gap right away when the climb starts proper. Garen Thomas from Enos is there, though, and he's trying to close the gap. As he's closing the gap, he's doing a magnificent job to close this gap. Garen Thomas. Man, you were beautiful at this point in time on this final KOM as you close the gap. But the only problem is up front, it's your teammate Dylan Van Barley who's sitting second wheel that pulls out of the train that's being led by Yumbo Visma. When he pulls out, remember, up front there is Van Hoydunk front. Then it's Thies Benoot followed by Wout Van Aert. We all know the MO right now of Yumbo Visma at this point in time. They're trying to drill it as fast as they can. And basically, they want a redo of Perry Nice Stage 1 where they just blew the whole field up. Now on front, still is Van Hoydunk's doing a fabulous job. When Nathan Van, when Dylan Van Barley pulls off right there, you got to remember, he's dropping off on the right side. There's a gap back here to Thies Benoot. Now Thies Benoot's going to close that gap. And remember, as he's closing that gap, it's Garrett Thomas in the background doing everything for dear life to try to get the Enos train of him and Danny Martinez up to the back end of Christophe Laporte. Now, when we go further back in the picture, I'll show you another picture just a little bit forward. It's Primos Roglic coming out of the blue. Clearly, Primos Roglic got a little bit lost before the last left turn of this final 900-meter climb. But now he's coming back in the picture, and the Slovenian is flying. As he's flying up, he's threading the needle. Garrett Thomas is on one side, and Primos Roglic is threading the needle to latch back onto the back wheel of the Jumbo Visma train. Up front now with Van Hoydunk pulling off, it's Thies Benoot time. Tis Benut starts accelerating on the pedals. He's out. He is screaming, tongue throwing out of the mouth. He's trying and trying to lay down every bit of power he can because on his wheel now is Wout Van Art. Locked on to Wout Van Art is Adam Yates from Enos, who has done a magnificent job all the way up this climb. And remember, guys, we're only about four or five hundred meters into this climb, but it's been full gas and the action was intense. It took me 30 minutes just to cover this climb to make sure I get it right to you. Adam Yates holding on to the wheel of Wout Van Aert as Tis Benut is throwing down. Behind Adam Yates, it's Jonas Vinigo. He's doing solid. Primos Roglic now, who has passed his teammate Laporte. This was brilliant thinking from Primos Roglic. He had to believe Christophe Laporte might be drop from, this, from the train here of Jumbo Visma. And that's what happens when Christophe Laporte drops. He opens up the gap to Garrett Thomas and Danny Martinez on his wheel. Oh, gee, Thomas, 
Man, did you must have to suffer closing the gap from Bike Exchange, then closing the gap that Dylan Van Barley, your own teammate, opened up, and now trying to close the gap from the wheel in front of you that's opening up again as it's Christophe Laporte that's dropping and opened up the gap on the two GC favorites, Danny Martinez and Garrett Thomas. Adam Yates, though, remember, there's three from Enos is still locked onto the wheel of Wout Van Aert. Only problem is Adam Yates has got his own dilemma because right now, Tish Benute is starting to blow. He's going to look over his shoulder straight at Wout Van Aert. Wout Van Aert, we know, is going to lay down some math right here and accelerate big time because when he does as he's coming past Tish Benute he's got time to adjust his radio he's playing fiddling with his radio sitting down accelerate straight past Tish Benute and everybody's coming off the wheel behind with the exception of Adam Yates who's standing up sprinting for dear life Jonas Vinigo Jumbo Visma the teammate of Wout Van Aert up front who's delivering the decisive attack with just a couple hundred meters to go on this climb Wout Van Aert up front. He jumps out of the saddle for the first time, starts to accelerate, and bam! There goes Adam Yates, the last Enios GC rider here, racing at the Tour de France, opens up the gap. Wout Van Aert sees the gap as he looks back over his shoulder. Now he's got a dilemma right here, folks, and this is a big dilemma. When I was sitting live watching this with Christian Vanderfield, the peacock, Christian Vanderfield's yelling, go Wout! Man, you can do it! You can go solo! I'm sitting back there looking at Christian, and I'm thinking, man, I don't know. Because you got a GC rider right back there, Adam Yates, and you got your own teammate, Jonas Vinigo. If you're weighed up, you got three guys to go to the line. Christian is Adam in at this point in time. Wout Van Art can make it. I'm saying, I don't know, one guy 10 kilometers, but I'm still there thinking, maybe, maybe not. I don't think so. I would wait for my teammates. Instead, Wout Van Art goes over the KOM with two second gap on Adam Yates, Enos that's chasing with Jonas Vinigo, Jumbo Visma locked on his wheel. The next gap talking about Danny Martinez, Garrett Thomas, and Primoz Roglic from Jumbo Visma sitting on them. When you look at these three groups, it's Jumbo Visma first with Wout Van Aert, it's Jonas Vinigo sitting on Adam Yates, and Primoz Roglic, their number one GC favorite here at the Tour de France, sitting on the other two Enos riders. There, that are six seconds back between the group in front of, of Jonas Vinigo and Adam Yates. Now as Danny Martinez and Garrett Thomas go over the climb, we look a little bit further back and we can finally see the two-time Tour de France champion, Tade Pogacar. He must be thinking, this is a nightmare. I'm glad I'm on 100% form as he's closing the gap up to the two Enos riders in front with Primoz Roglic sitting on. You know Tade Pogacar's thinking, if I can just get up to Primoz Roglic, this Tour de France is still mine for the taking. Up front, Wout Van Aert's diving down the descent and blazing on the pedals. Behind finishing the climb, though, is Bike Exchange Dylan Grunewagen, and he was getting a push going up the climb from his teammate. He's got two teammates with him. Later, he'll have three as Bike Exchange dropped one more teammate out of the front group. Only problem is, guess what? Bike Exchange didn't drop anybody else. They had two more riders up front. Michael Matthews is in that front group with GC favorites. And Luca Mezgitz is up there as behind Dylan Grunewagen's chasing with three teammates in front of him. But they're starting to blow fast and they can't quite close the gap. Now guys, remember, Bike Exchange are here to win stages. Dylan Grunewagen is one of the fastest stage race winners here. And when we're talking pure sprinters in the Tour de France, in the world, just got done winning on stage three, like I told you at the beginning of this butterfly effect. And now Bike Exchange, just like if we go all the way back to Dauphiné, when they wouldn't drop their whole team back for Dylan Grunewagen, and now he's not going to get back on as they just can't close the gap. Okay, they got two guys up front. Michael Matthews pretty fast. Luca Mez gets pretty fast, but they're chasing Wout Van Aert still with the best sprinter in on their team. Locked back there that can't close the gap. We fast forward back up to the front of the peloton. That's now about 27 seconds behind Wout Van Aert, and they just can't get organized. 
Yambo Visma's Wout Van Aert solo, and then back in the front of the peloton, Yambo Visma just causing chaos at the front as no one can get organized. I saw Albacine Phoenix chasing. I saw Quick Step on the front at one point in time, and if you look at the picture, they got one rider, Sinichel, on the front, and then they can't get their other riders to the front because they suffered too much over that climb. They still have the green jersey wearer, Fabio Jakobsen, the winner of stage one in this group, but yet they still got to close the gap up to Wout Van Aert. Up front, Wout Van Aert with 2.5 kilometers to go. The gap is down to 25 seconds, but the Yumbo Visma rider, he's flying. There's a bit of a tailwind pushing Wout Van Aert. And whenever you have the amount of fitness that Wout Van Aert has, it's magical. He is flying on the pedals. There's no doubt about that. But when you have this kind of fitness, you got a tailwind too. And the guys can't get organized in the back at this point in time with 2.5 kilometers to go. I'm looking over at Christian Vanderfeld. Yeah. Boy, you were right. There's no doubt about that, Christian. Wout Van Aert is going to win today. Now the group behind, they still can't get organized. Jumbo Visma's all over the place. We go under one kilometer to go. The gap's at about 15, 17 seconds to Wout Van Aert. Just before the line, Wout Van Aert starts flapping the wings. And when you're wearing that helmet and it's Red Bull, we all know what it means. And you're wearing the yellow jersey as he's flying to the line with enough time to celebrate his first win here at the Tour de France for 2022. Now, let me remind you, Wout Van Aert, second in the time trial, second in stage two, second in stage three. And now he's celebrating here at stage four to take just a memorable win here at the Tour de France. But guess what? He's not the only one because in the back for second place, Jasper Philipson, who went all the way against the left fencing with Alexander Kristoff, blazed across the line thinking he wanted a posted up for his sponsors and did the victory salute here for second place on the stage. Now, this was a fantastic finish. You don't have to watch the whole stage, but like I said, you got to come through and watch the last 15K and look at all the details. When we really dissect and look at the cover here, of course, Wout Van Aert's easy to see. Then you flip the book open, you read on the next cover, and then it's Jasper Philipsen, the other Belgian writer here, getting second with the victory salute. That's easy to see, but you got to go a little bit deeper because back there, Tade Pagacha, who bridged the gap, the last one of the GC favorites at the top of this KOM, rode amazing. Danny Martinez was amazing. Garrett Thomas for Team Enos, his teammate, closing gaps left and right. Unbelievably good form. Primoz Roglic, who came out of nowhere, dicing up through all the favorites to bridge up to the Yumbo Visma train up front. Absolutely amazing. Adam Yates, you were fantastic to hold on to Wout Van Aert's wheel as long as you did. And Jonas Vinigo, clearly you are still on form. When we look at that stage win on the last day of Dauphiné, it looks like you could be even on better form than that. So when we go forward past the cobblestone stage of tomorrow, stage five, you know we got a Tour de France GC battle. When you look at today's stage four finish up this 900 meter climb, but Wout Van Aert, the highlight for sure, and all the GC favorites, a close second to Wout Van Aert. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Tomorrow is the cobblestone stage here at the Tour de France. You know there's going to be drama, and you know I'll find it here on the Butterfly Effect. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you real soon.